How's it going y'all? This is McFrosty Boy, and in this video we're going to focus on team comms in Apex Legends. As always, thank you so much to all the new and old Frosty friends for your support. I hate to pester you all, but I really, really would appreciate it if you can upvote the post on Reddit. Your support has a direct effect on the overall success of the videos. To give you all some perspective, the video from two weeks ago earned around 1.5k upvotes on Reddit and 2k views on YouTube over the weekend. In comparison, the last week's video earned about 20 upvotes and slightly over 200 views on YouTube over the weekend. So please, upvote the post on Reddit. Further instructions for how you can support the Frosty Friends community can be found below. Alright, with all that out of the way, let's get into the action. One left, one left. Blood who got red. Nice! Early on, our squad chats while surveying the map to watch what the other teams are doing off the drop. We're gonna stretch, but we yeah. should get this like by ourselves and then we can rotate like either states or uh, what's it called, uh, docks. Our Jumpmaster Papega informs our team of the intended drop location as well as the early game strat. In this case, we're going to stretch to Oasis for loot and then look for an early fight in docks or estates. I see two squads going hydroponics. Two squads going in here. Honestly, like we might just have, like be completely alone on this side of the map. As a passenger, I make a point to scout on the way down from the ship in order to identify where other squads are landing nearby. This information can help you figure out where fights are likely to break out and where and when you can expect third parties in early fights. Honestly, it's a habit you should have even as the jumpmaster because of how important this information is. Since our squad landed alone, we're mostly just looting at this point, but you can see how our team uses comms to loot more efficiently and get into the action sooner. Hey, my, my, my mid-range this game's gonna be a G. Meech goes first when he calls out part of his planned loadout for this game, a G7. This helps Pepega and I get a better idea of what ranges to expect out of Meech and better shape our own loadouts to be more effective together. You can see how our squad communicates to optimally redistribute our resources, making sure that the gold knockdown shield rightfully goes to lifeline, getting me the guns that I am comfortable with, and communicating our expected loadouts for the rest of the game. Um, are, do we feel looted? Like, are we wanting to fight, or...? Uh, I don't yeah, have any boundaries. Huh? I can... We then discuss our next rotation and determine our squad's overall combat readiness. As planned earlier, we decide to go by estates in order to get a shot at some fighting and use the crafter to make some nice-to-haves, if there's nobody there. Yeah, uh, hydroponic yeah, squad may come here, though. Remembering that we saw two squads landing in hydroponics, I remind my squad that we could get attacked from that direction. It seems like nagging, but there's so much to keep track of in the game, so sometimes a reminder can help your teammates maintain awareness. We arrive at estates and do not find evidence of enemies or fighting. Generally, I would consider this to be suboptimal. In my opinion, it would be better to gather this loot from an early third party or controlled engagement from high ground, since it's faster and also nets us some early KP. Since we can't do that, we instead do our best to be efficient with our time and use the crafter to fill in our bags. I hear car. Yeah. Or, am I hearing? Can I hear the turbine from here? I don't know. Cell's here. Heard like a whirring noise. I think that's the ambient from the uh. As we're looting, I think I hear a car and notify my teammates who also check and confirm that I was likely hearing the turbine, not an approaching enemy. In situations like these, I generally think it's better to be wrong than to be quiet. Three people actively searching for enemies is way more effective than just one. After finishing up in estates, we leave to make our rotation. Alright, so I'm gonna say we just chill here just yeah. for this ring right now because all the other squads are gonna be coming to this side of the map. We spend our time scouting and looting the billboard village, mostly just stalling for other squads to start fighting so we can safely third party. So for a fucking... Oh, right here, right here, right here! Papega spots the enemy and makes a high urgency call out on the enemy's push. He makes the level of urgency clear with his tone of voice and short, fast repetition of the same message. Oh, that's a Kraber! No line of sight. Gibby's got Kraber! Papega also calls out that the Kraber is on Gibby. It is critical to call out high impact weapons like the Kraber, the PK, and the Mastiff so that your teammates can adjust their strategy when exchanging damage with the enemy. Uh, you sure? You sure? <laughs> yeah, I don't think he has it. They're, They're pushing hard. off that. Right here? Yeah, yeah, right here. Papega and I both call out the approaching enemies and general direction. It's totally fine to have overlapping call-outs, as it's possible that either Papega or I could have missed the push. Meech gets put in a tough spot and has to trade for damage. 
I'm like actually uh, getting racked right now. Broke, broke. He makes sure to call out that he broke an enemy. At the same time, I call out that I'm losing my damage exchange. This leads Papega to drop down from his height and come to assist while I stall waiting for support. Batting. Nice I let my teammates know that I'm starting a battery so they understand that I can't provide support for a few seconds. Last one. Nice tap. Papega starts the res and Meech makes a reminder call out that there's only one enemy left. Heal I'm following him. I'm following him. When Push Gibraltar them. attempts to retreat, I notify my teammates that I'm following Gibby through the portal so that they can decide whether to follow me or to wait on the other end of the portal. Gibraltar keeps screwing with us here on the portal. Where is he? No, he's taking it back now. He's taking it back he's again. Hopping. He's hopping. He's hopping. Just hold it. But hey, I want the KP. Stay on there. Stay on there. Stay but on I want there. the KP. Honestly, Papega and Meech do the right thing here, being disciplined on either end of the portal. And had we all chased KP like I had, we might have actually missed the kill on the Gibby or drawn out the engagement and gotten third party instead. <laughs> Are you teabagging him? Could you be yeah. any more toxic? Dude, fuck those guys. Oh my god. Hey, uh, Eagle like, pushed real hard. Jesus! At this point, our squad is pretty much endgame looted. We're still expecting more action in the Hammond area, so we play it safe. Just farming damage and generally being annoying. Move. 122. Frost, Frost, give me that gray brown gear to hit a headshot. Meech dares me to hit a headshot, so obviously I have to. This knock mostly just forces resources out of the enemy squad for later, and there isn't a justification to push from this distance. Uh, do we take Hammond Hill? Let's go this way. I hate that fucking place, honestly. Let's walk in. Let's just walk in here. They can't stop us. Reloaded. I think we just take the car and we get in the zone. Yeah. I don't even know if we need a car. We could just walk it. Uh, I, I like having a car because yeah, we can just, just like, leave. Yeah. Fine. Our squad starts figuring out our next rotation and decides to skip the high ground on Hammond Hill because of time. We agree to take the car for speed and to have more options in case our rotation is blocked. After arriving, we're once again in a strong position, mostly waiting for the circle to close and force more commitment out of our enemies. In the meantime, we're just again trying to be annoying. Right here, Frosty, Frosty, free shot, free shot. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Don't, don't shoot, don't shoot, don't shoot. Heads up. Not this is like such a free shot, such a free shot. Yeah, I'm just too far from you guys. Hey, there's saying. one out here too. These are free shots. This is like, this is... Oh, there's three of them. Uh, I'm gonna drop down just so they don't see us, dude. Okay. I, I don't want to give Frosty shot away. Meech and Papega start locating shots and marking, and they hold their shots to give me a chance to miss a bunch with the Kraber. So just, oh, he's getting shot from here. Get shot from here. Frosty, oh. Frosty, shots here. Watch yourself. There's another squad attacking. 116 on the oh, horizon's fuck. leg. She jumped down. She jumped I, down. I, I need you guys to get in the car. Climb over yeah, there. Yeah, come, come, come. While we're waiting for the circle to close, we get initiated on from a different angle. Papega was already moving the car, and his call ensures that we make a clean getaway from a potentially lethal engagement. Is already red, lol. Dude, I'm beaming with this G7. We went by him and I hit like three headshots. Caustic down, caustic like, down, caustic nice, down. Nice, nice. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Our squad wants to dislodge this enemy from the high ground, and my Kala, after downing the caustic, gives our squad the justification to make a push. Pad, hey, pad, 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 pad. Closer. Papega makes a call for jump pad, which I repeat because I also want the jump pad. I'm climbing to second floor, if I can. As I contest the high ground, I call out my angle of attack so that my teammates can make better decisions regarding how they want to follow up or cover me. Whole place is, whole place is rigged. It's home alone in here. Not they rest. they rezzed. Meech lets us know that the building is trapped up and I call out that the enemy rezzed. Uh, I got a firm on the door. Get out if you have to, Frosty. I'm burning door knocks! Knock, knock, knock again, knock again. Meech lets us know that he's burning the door upstairs and later that he re knocks an enemy with the thermite. Coming to you guys, coming to you guys. Burning hard. Burning fucking hard. Yeah, there's Horizon down on the ground on me. When I lose a damage exchange with Horizon, I start to phase, letting my teammates know that I'm coming towards them and that I'm getting chased by Horizon. Calling out a pursuing enemy as you run to your teammates as Wraith can give your teammates free shots, so make sure to do so. I need to bat again. I call out that I'm doing a shield battery, letting my teammates know that I need cover and have a limited ability to provide support. My arc, my arc, my arc! 
When they push the building, I tell them that the arc star in the building is mine, so that they don't get distracted thinking it's an enemy arc star and can try and herd the enemy into its range. Once again, in a strong position, our squad goes back to our stalling mode, calling out squads and more shots for me to miss. Pick it up. Wait, wait, look over here, look over here. There, I'm out, I'm out of shots, I'm out of shots, down. I'm out of shots. I let my teammates know that I'm out of shots with the Craver, so they no longer need to call out shots or distances. You guys wanna push up to it? I don't know, like, uh, I, I don't have like a gun we, that I can work with. We can push with. edge ring, just for a little bit. While I work on ditching the empty Craver, our team starts planning our next action. Meech wants to push, and I let my teammates know that I'm still deciding on my second gun. I pick up the Sentinel because it looks like we're still going to be working from distance going forward. No line of sight from here. Let's move up. Let's move up with Meech. We'll hold these guys out. We'll hold these guys out. I tell my squad that I have no line of sight on the enemies, and Papega makes the call out to move forward to Meech. Guys, no triple. These are, this is the last squad. Last two squads. Last two squads. Last two squads. Last two squads. Yeah. Our squad finally realizes it's the last two squads that are fighting in front of us. This is exactly why nagging type callouts can be so important, since information can often fall through the cracks. Thirty-six, they, they got seventy-two on that guy. Yeah, I'm looking up, looking up. Watch to our right. They got an easy yellow line of sight on us. Actually, they don't throw in there. Meech calls yep. for a need to watch for sight lines on the right, so I shift over, like dipping back around. Uh, I got another PK here. So right way. here, right here, right here. Give me. Hit 50, 50 red, 58 red. Papega shows a really good habit here of calling out notable shield damage, what color the shield is, and on which character. When you've got the time, you should also make similar callouts to give your teammates more information to work with. Watch this spot. Oh, go this way. Wait. Headshot, 49. Wait, I think we retake the boxes if they're going that way, man. Guys, guys, come on, come on. Yeah. We're gonna get pitched. We're gonna no, get no, they, they already took it. They already took it. They already took it. Meech calls out that one of the enemy squads is rapping on us, so we start to attempt to back up and keep all of the squads on one side of us. I notice the enemy has taken our desired position and has sandwiched us. And now, for a quick rant about Wraith. A lot of players pick Wraith because her smaller hitbox, superior animations, and Voidwalk allow for a greater margin of error when overcommitting, allowing players to be more reckless when looking to drop games with high kills and damage. While these things are true about the character, the thing that makes Wraith so broken is how all of these abilities collectively enable better plays with her portal. I know it's a little self-serving to say so, but situations like these are where I think players really prove whether they actually deserve to play Wraith. You can see how quickly I assess the overall position, immediately move into cover, and start a portal to help my teammates escape this otherwise lethal situation. As the Wraith, it is your responsibility to know where the enemy squads are, what power positions you can retreat to, and to be the first to identify when your squad is in trouble. If you play Wraith and don't think about these things while fighting, that's okay. Like any skill, attention to these kinds of details can be built over time, and you should start now if you intend to play Wraith at higher levels. Back. We can take this one. Oh, fuck. Come to mine. Get, get in the port. Get in the port. Are you guys okay? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get to your port. I'll be fine. Okay. I just fucking they might take it. They I'm, might covering, take I'm, it. I'm covering, I'm covering, I'm covering. As Papega passes through the portal, he gives a warning that the enemy may take the portal also, so I make sure to cover that option. From here on out, we're just poking the enemy on high ground, trying to be annoying again. My teammates, again, make good cards of big damage on enemies. We don't commit to a push here because doing so leaves us susceptible to a third party situation. Papega's prediction comes true and my coverage of the option enables me to quickly call out enemies on our portal, allowing our team overall to quickly adapt to the situation. I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. He's not gonna peek, dude. Nah, he's not. Wait, on the portal! Oh! Big damage on Gibby, big damage on Gibby! I call out big damage on Gibby who rounds the corner into my squad. If they have the option or time to prioritize targets, they'll know who to hit first, so we can ideally secure a numbers advantage. Big damage at all! Big damage at all! I cracked! I knocked one! I knocked one! I knocked one! Push, Frosty! Push! My teammates call out big damage on all enemies, as well as a knock with an arc star, which encourages me to be extremely aggressive as I slide jump around the corner to finish this fight quickly. I start the res on Papega because he's lifeline and can tap Meech. Meech does a great job by watching for the enemy squad to push and keeping us informed, even though he's down. After getting Pepega up, I take Overwatch responsibilities from Meech, letting my team know that I don't see enemies so they can finish healing. I don't see I him. Down. I don't see him. 
they're not pushing. They're not pushing. They don't know. Hey. They don't know that the team aped like that. Oh man, this shot. I would have saw the kill feed. Hey, I'm busy. Uh, sniper. I swapped the mastiff because I'm expecting for this game to end at close quarters after the circle closes. Again. No, I like, need like a real gun, like a mastiff here. One's close. Path is close. Path is close. Pepega calls out enemy close so that our squad can prepare for a possible engagement. Oh, we have to go. We have to go. We have to fucking go. The zone. Yeah. I don't have portal. We notice that we need to rotate to zone. I quickly notify my teammates that I have no portal to help us make the rotation and Meech throws down a jump pad to give us more options. After reaching the circle, Meech calls out an enemy on his location. Right here, right here. I'm me, I'm me, I'm me, I'm me. I'm, I'm, I'm coming, I'm coming. Pad. I have a Mastiff. I notify my teammates that I'm approaching and let them know that I have a Mastiff so that they know I'll be working at super close range. Plus one, plus one. Meech calls out one shot on Bloodhound. Again, so that if we're able to, we can focus our fire on them. Horizon's been hit for 38 on her purple. It's late, but I call it damage, shield color, and character after doing damage to the Horizon. Papega calls out a cracked enemy character along with damage on flesh. Path is cracked! 20 flesh! We first Bloodhound on low ground because the upcoming high ground push will be tough and we won't have the attention to spare to deny a res if the enemy manages to get positioned correctly. Swap, swap down. here, swap here! I'm good, I'm good, I'm batting, I'm batting. Meech calls out an available shield swap for Papega, and Papega responds, letting us know that he's batting instead. Shoot watch it, the soul, Watch the soul. I bring attention to the enemy horizon ult, and Papega calls for our team to focus fire and deny the ult. We're, we're, we're in here, we're in here. We're good. We got range. Down, yeah. down, 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 down! One more, oh one my more, god! One more. Yeah, I'm walking, I'm walking, it, I'm walking, I'm walking it, I'm walking it. Papega calls out another downed enemy and that there's only one enemy left, giving urgency to our push on this last enemy. Meech says he has no jump pad and calls out that the enemy pathfinder is on the roof. I'm going to go in and enter from behind. They know I'm here. Again, as the Wraith, it's my responsibility to take on the most risk by going first on this push. I tell my squad I'm walking it and start projecting my intended approach path so my teammates can make more informed decisions with their pathing, ideally surrounding the last enemy. He's angering me! Meech calls out that the path is aggroing him on low ground, so I drop down to support. Instead of fighting two of us, the Pathfinder goes right back up to the height, which Papega was covering, leading to a win. So to summarize all of this, overall, we use our comms to coordinate and agree on macro strategy, draw attention to high priority information during fights, and provide a constant stream of information allowing each individual to make more informed decisions. Well, that's it for this video. The ideal comms are unique to each squad and individual, and hopefully these examples can give you an idea of things you can try as you figure that out for yourself. I want to help you all improve at Apex Legends, and I need your help to get this content to the rest of the community. So like, comment, subscribe, hop in the stream, join our Discord, and keep putting in the hard work. Thanks for watching, and I can't wait to see you in the next video. Another squad. Thank you. Oh yeah, you got Kraber from another squad, by the way. Oh my god, Frosty with the carry. Crack? One HP.